Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys an updated tier list for every single role in the game. But it's not going to be just a tier list. Just like the last video, we're going to have a special edition. So what's going to be today's edition? The solo carry edition guys. By the way, there's timestamps in the description if you just want to see the tier list and don't actually want to listen to the video. So what do I mean with the solo carry edition? I'm not going to talk about every single champion that can solo carry because, for example, we all know Darius can solo carry, right? We all know Aurelia can solo carry. I'm going to be talking about those more subtle solo carrying champions, you know? While you may think these champions are not solo carrying, they, they can and they are. And I'll explain how. So, let's get into it. And the first one that I want to talk about, you guys are not going to expect this. Boom! Is this guy right here. Singed. So, while Singe may not deal the most single target damage, while Singed may not have a lot of burst damage, while Singe may not have any tools really that all of the solo carry champions have, he is a unique one. When you get the slowing item, the right eye scepter on him, when you have a lot of damage, when you are tanky, when you're fast, you can provide so much value in a team fight by slowing the entire enemy team, you know, just doing damage to all of them, making them chase you, just all the things that he does, and you will genuinely carry games with terrible teammates. Because you're going to make the game so much easier for them to carry. And I'm not going to talk too much about it anymore. I have like three singed videos on my YouTube channel. Check them out. Because they are the, one of the most entertaining videos on my channel, For first of all. But secondly, they really teach you the fundamentals of singed on how to carry with that champion. Because he is the most underrated champion in the game. It's crazy. Like, I used to think singed was trash when I started Wild Rift. Up until I actually picked him up. And up until I got absolutely demolished by singed one tricks. The reason that I talked so long about Singed is, of course, because he is insanely underrated and he can actually solo carry games so hard. The next one that we're going to be talking about is going to be Trindamir. Trindamir is that type of champion that if you let him farm into the late game, he deals so much crit damage. And then with that ultimate of his, you don't need teammates. You don't need teammates. You're going to be unkillable for five seconds. You're going to rake havoc in those five seconds, of course. You can kill two people, three people. You can kill their entire backline in those five seconds, guys. Trindamir is an absolute solo carry champion. And the next one we're going to talk about is Akshan. While he's in the middle of the beat here, which is not the very best, the reason that he's right there is because he's not as tanky as the others may be, he has insane solo carry potential. And there is different ways, of course. First of all, he does a lot of damage. Secondly, he has a lot of mobility with his third ability to catch out enemies. But third of all, that stupid passive of his that revives your allies. Even if you have an absolute garbage team and they all die in a team fight, but they get the enemies at some low amounts of HP and you kill those enemies, you're going to revive your entire team single-handedly solo carrying the entire game. Solo carrying is not only killing enemies, in Akshan's case, it's also bringing back your own teammates. You know, it's like the reverse strategy. You bring back your own teammates to bring more power to your team. The next one we're going to talk about is Jace. So Jace is a new champion. And although I've, he's not the strongest out of them, you know, he's, he still fits the top of the eight here. He's fairly decent, he has ranged, he has melee, but in the like when you reach the later game, he can deal insane damage to backlines. And you know, there are some weaknesses that he has with team fights, but still, some people may not see it coming how much damage Jace can deal in the backline, guys. It's insane. Like when he dives your backline, uses the right abilities, he can absolutely blow up carries. He can absolutely blow them up. It's insane. He can also push people into your own team with that third ability of his melee. Yes, like he has really good carry potential, guys. And then the, um, the last one that we're going to talk about is Jax. You know, like, the reason that I'm not talking about Riven and the reason that I'm not talking about Renekton is because we all know they can solo carry, right? But Jax right here, on the bottom of the B tier, people, look, people think that Jax is only a split-pushing champion, right? People only think that he's a split-pushing champion. But, he, I mean, he kind of is, but not only a split-pushing champion. He's an absolute late-game powerhouse as well. And you know what? You know what? We're going we're, we're gonna to do some challenges right here. If this video reaches 1,000 likes... I'm going to work on a Jax video to show you guys that Jax is absolutely amazing in the late game. You know, the late game. Because in the early game, he sucks. He can't carry in the early game. But in the late game, besides the fact that he can push a lot of turrets, he has insane solo carry potential. Like with that ultimate of his, you dive in the enemy, you're literally going to have like 150 armor and 150 magic resist. Like what? What? Why, why does he have so much magic resist and armor? Uh, especially armor, by the way. So... 
he can absolutely wreak havoc on the team, just like that other champion that I mentioned in the background of the enemy. So as I said, this video reaches a thousand likes. If you guys want it, I'll make a Jax video. All right. By the way, yeah, we'll go to the jungle. By the way, let me know the champion that can solo carry the hardest in the comments as well. And I would actually prefer for you guys to let me know some champions that not everyone knows about. Like, of course, Lee Sin, you know, we all know Lee Sin can do stuff like that. But let me know some underrated champions that can solo carry games. Let me know some champions that not many people know of that can solo carry games. And tell me how. <clears throat> So, we get into the jungle tier list, and the first one that I want to talk about is actually Rangar. So, Rangar is that type of champion that, like, you guys remember how broken he was, but Riot nerfed him. So, he kind of sucks in the early game now, but what some people don't know is that he still one-shots people in the late game. <laughs> Look, there is a reason when I, when, when I make videos, there is a reason that I pretty much always mention the name Rangar. The reason is because Rengar is an absolute one-shot champion. When you play against a Rengar, like as an ADC, you have to get a Guardian Angel or you have to get a Stasis Enchant. He is the champion that literally forces you to build these things. Otherwise, he's continuously going to one-shot you. And if you're good with Rengar, which I am not, by the way, that's why I don't have a lot of Rengar videos. If you're really good at Rengar, oh baby, he deals a lot of damage. Oh baby, in the late game, he's going to one-shot you. And oh baby. B, you're gonna hate playing against a good Rangar, guys. This champion is an absolute unit and can absolutely solo carry games. And then we move to Evelyn. This one a lot of people know about, but I still wanna talk about Evelyn because, oh my god, Evelyn. I made an Evelyn video like a few days ago, guys. It's just, this champion, it's basically, it's basically the female Rangar, right? But a little safer. They both have similar abilities, right? They can both become invisible. They can both both dive on the enemy. They can both execute the enemy with their abilities. But Evelyn is a little easier because enemies won't see you. The radius, when she's invisible, they won't see it. And you're constantly invisible. All you have to do is get to the late game and you're going to one-shot anyone. It doesn't even take much skill. You just dive the enemy jinx with your abilities and you one-shot her with your ultimate. It's absolutely incredible. She can absolutely single-handedly solo carry against. It's insane. The next champion that we have is Olaf. So the reason that I'm mentioning Olaf is even though he may not be the strongest champion, Olaf is that type of champion that regardless of who you're against, you can still solo carry. Because champions can get hold back by CC, right? Like if you dive in with a Rengar, you could get permanently rooted or stunned. Olaf, nope. Olaf uses his ultimate, becomes unstoppable for six seconds, and during those six seconds, you're gonna be insanely powerful, man. Of course, you're gonna have less armor and magic resist. You know, of course, there's there's problems with it. Otherwise, it would be broken because Olaf used to be broken. You know, when but then they nerfed him. But still, a good Olaf who knows when to use his ultimates, like there is almost no counter to it in some situations. It's incredible how hard this champion can carry. And then the next one we talk about is Master Yi. Even though Master Yi got nerfed and stuff like that, I mean, do I really have to tell you guys about Master Yi? We, we've all seen it happen when he was broken, right? Master Yi can solo carry games. Get to the late game, avoid CC, avoid everything with your first ability. Again, I have a lot of Master Yi videos on my channel. You should really check them out if you want to learn Master Yi. He's still okay. You know, as you see, he's in the B tier, which is playable. Not amazing, but okay. And then the last chapter that we talk about in the jungle is gonna be Fizz. So Fizz is pretty bad in the jungle now, actually. But Fizz, guys, like you shouldn't underestimate Fizz. Even though he's pretty bad in the jungle, if you don't shut this champion down in the early game, which you should, by the way, because he's incredibly weak in the early game in the jungle, especially after his nerfs, if you don't shut him down in the early game and he gets to the late game, his ganks become unbearable. You literally cannot do anything against his ganks. When he hooks his shark on you, all you can do is either use your stasis and chant or pray to whatever god you believe in. These are the two only things that you can do. And the third thing is just dying and cursing at your teammates. Fizz is such a strong jungler in the mid-late game. Mid-late game, okay? You can solo carry games in the mid-late game. All you have to do is get through the early game, which is actually really hard if you're against a good jungler. But if you get through it, your ganks are going to become unbearable when you play Fizz, guys. All right, on to the mid lane. And actually, I've changed the mid lane a little bit. Mid lane used to be just pretty much Zix in the top tier, but they actually nerfed Zix a little bit. And, you know, I'm, I've seen some other champions really rise in the meta, really become incredibly powerful. So let's talk about it. The first champion, the solo carry champion, I mean, obviously, we all know Katarina is an absolute solo carry champion. I am not even going to talk about Katarina. But the one that I do want to talk about is this girl right here, Lux. 
I made a Lux video recently, and the thing about Lux is, you know what the beauty really is about Lux? A lot of people don't really expect a mid lane Lux to be that strong. Because even, like, mid lane Lux, the reason that I put her in the S tier, in solo queue, is because if you get to the mid late game, you know, if you get a, if you get a few ability power items, once you catch an enemy with your root, which is your first ability, they're dead. Because you use your first ability, third ability, and ultimate, and squishy enemies cannot tank that. You're gonna one-shot them. You're literally gonna one-shot them. This is just so absurdly stupid of Lux. Like, even though she may not be the very best champion, this little combo right here allows you to absolutely solo carry games on Lux. When you gank, when you gank a lane as a Lux, all you have to do is hit your root and you get a kill. As a Lux, you can just use your ult to secure kills on other lanes. As a Lux, you can help your jungler root, use your second ability to shield them. She has solo carry potential. You can be the difference in a team as a Lux and absolutely hard carry the game, guys. The next one is going to be Vagar. So I actually thought Vagar was going to be broken, but people kind of understand how to play against them now, right? They're picking champions that have dashes because then they can dash out of the walls and things like that. However, if you pick Vagar against enemies that are not as mobile, you know, you shouldn't pick him against Katarina, you shouldn't pick him against Ezreal, you know, you shouldn't pick him against these types of champions or against Olaf. If you pick him against the right composition, who's going to have a really hard time escaping your walls, all you have to do is farm in the early game, farm, 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 keep farming. And then once you reach the late game, like if an enemy tries to dive you, let's say they try to dive you. All you have to do, use your first ability and then your second ability on yourself so they can't attack you. And then your ultimate ignite and they're dead. They're, like you're, gonna, you're literally going to kill anyone like that, anyone, even bruisers. So that's the beauty of Vagar. If you reach the late game, you can absolutely solo carry games. And I actually have quite a lot of Vagar videos, which you should check out if you want to play him. Um, they're on my channel. Just look up Hell's Devil Vagar and you'll find it. The next one we want to talk about is Yasuo. So some people think that Yas like of a lot of people know that Yasuo is good, but some people think that Yasuo only really works when you have a Malphite or when you have a Wukong in your team, something like that. While I'm not saying that, like, wait, I want to phrase it correctly. Um, of course that helps. You know, of course it helps to have a Wukong or a Malphite. I'm not saying it's bad to have them. But you can actually solo carry on your own as well. Yasuo is just, once you reach the late game, this is yet another champion that if he just reaches those, those power spikes that he needs, if you have two crit items, you know, if you have the Blade of the Room King, you're going to shred through the enemy. You have to have careful positioning. You have to play him correctly. But oh baby, if you get those items and just get through that annoying early game, because he's not so strong in the early game, he gets bullied by a lot of champions. If you get through that, man, you're gonna solo carry games. You're gonna absolutely so like hard carry games on Yasuo. You guys, you guys know what it feels like, right? When you're playing against a really good Yasuo who's just completely bo like bombing your comp your your teammates because you can't do anything against him. He has that shielding of his passive. He has so much damage. He has that ultimate when an enemy is knocked up. It's just incredibly powerful. And the next one we're gonna talk about is Jin. I'm just joking. Jin sucks, and you cannot solo carry games with Jin. So. The actual next one that we're going to talk about is going to be Brand. So Brand, he got nerfed, right? A lot of people know that Brand got nerfed and uh, he's, he can still solo carry games. Let me just tell you that. I am actually working on a Brand video. It's just I haven't really gotten quite good enough yet at him to make a video. I'm pretty good at Brand, but like Brand is so powerful. You know, in the uh, he's also like a mid late game champion with that ultimate of his. If you just team fight with Brand, and make, make good use of your abilities, you know, when the enemies are sticking together and stuff like that, you should be fine. Like, you can just farm easily in your lane. Don't do too many stupid things. When you get through that mid-late game with Brand, absolute hard carry, guys. Super, super powerful. And I want to talk about a common misconception here. Now, I want to talk about Zed. Because in my eyes, in my eyes, Zed is not a solo carry champion. You may be thinking, what the hell is he saying? But let me explain why. Uh, why I'm thinking that, of course, because you can have a different opinion from me, right? While Zed can actually absolutely assassinate enemies, if you're against a good enemy, um, it's like, sure, Zed can kill one enemy, but then he doesn't have his ultimate anymore. And of course, there is so much uh, counter ability against Zed. Just buy a stasis enchant or get a guardian angel. And then that's really going to negate Zed's carry potential. I still put Zed in the S tier because he's just so powerful. But not a solo carry champion, in my opinion. Not a solo carry champion, not like the others. Because there is so much counter ability to it. Okay, um, let's move on to the dragon lane. And here, we all know Ezreal can solo carry, right? We all know Ezreal can solo carry. 
But now I want to talk about some more un, more uh, subtle champions or underrated champions that can so absolutely solo carry games. First one is Ash. I mean, some of you may not know that I immediately would say Ash because I made an Ash video recently, and oh my god, she is strong. She is hella strong. Like. She is super strong. I, I, I didn't even know that she was this strong. It's pretty stupid. And they even buffed her. Like, you can get through the early game by poking enemies with your second ability in the early game. And of course, once you reach the late game with Ash, you have your ultimate every 20 seconds. You can constantly shoot it across the map, stun the enemy for three and a half seconds. And of course, in your lane as well, like you can hit an enemy with your ultimate. And then even after that slow, the beauty of Ash is no one can escape Ash because her, her abilities and her basic attacks are gonna slow you and when you get to the late game when you're gonna have a lot of crit They're gonna slow you even more right you're literally not gonna be able to escape uh, ash and on top of all of that She also deals huge damage in the late game. The next one we have is Caitlyn Caitlyn is a new champion and while not many people understand her quite yet She's strong, you know, okay, while she may not have the biggest damage in the early game, she can actually survive the early game by utilizing her big range to just poke the enemy. But her real power gets into the late game, when you have those traps, guys. And the reason that I'm saying that she can solo carry games is if you know how to dance around her second ability, which are all those traps, you know, the traps when an enemy steps into them, they get rooted. Even though the enemy may be able to see your traps, if you position them correctly and if you run around them all the time, they, they will keep getting hit by the traps, granting you a free headshot, which deals insane damage. All you have to do is just position carefully, and you're going to provide so much value as a Caitlyn in the Dragon Lane, guys. And then the next one that I want to talk about is Jinx. Jinx, like, when Wild Rift came out, everyone knew that Jinx could hard carry games. And um, in Arcane... Wait, no, no, I don't want to spoil it. Never mind, sorry. Um, we all knew that Jinx came out. Uh, but she actually, you know, she kind of fell off. You know, when all the new champions came out... She kind of fell off because they these new champions were actually incredibly powerful. And then Jinx, you know, she slowly split, but steadily fell off. But Jinx can still solo carry games, guys. And I am a really good Jinx player. So from a Jinx, from a good Jinx player to you, I can promise you that Jinx is still a solo carry champion. However, it takes a while, right? Like you really have to get through the early game. But her rockets help you to get through the early game. But once you reach the mid-late game, actually no, with Jinx, it takes even more time. Like even the mid-game, you're gonna have a rough time solo carrying. But once you reach the late game, and with Jinx, the, necess the necessity is to have a good support, like a fitting support. You need you need to have an enchanter support with Jinx, otherwise she's not going to work. So you need to have a Lulu, you need to have a Nami or a Janna or something like that. Otherwise, Jinx is actually not a solo carry champion. So she's only really a solo carry champion with a good support besides her. <clears throat> okay, um, Draven, I, I know, Draven, no. I like, even though Draven can solo carry, it's actually so hard with him right now. He's pretty bad now. Like... I don't know, like that nerf to Draven's first ability really hurt him. And you don't see a lot of Draven one tricks around anymore just because of those, like he, he that nerf really hurt him a lot. So, okay, let's now move on to the support tier list. And let me immediately get into it. Not a lot of supports can solo carry the game, but we're gonna get into the ones that can. Nami. Guys, why do people think that Nami doesn't do a lot of damage? I don't understand. Nami deals so much damage. Like you should actually like when you have a good Nami in your team, or there is a good Nami in the enemy team, enemy team, just check out the damage graph, and you'll actually see that the Nami dealt like an insane amount of damage. Because for some reason, Nami is just able to deal a lot of damage with her with her second ability, with her ultimate, with the, just with her basic attacks, the buff from her third ability. She deals a lot of damage, and she can actually make a bad ADC like good, right? She can like, and that can solo carry the game as a Nami. Like, as a support, you can absolutely dominate your lane and also do a lot of damage yourself. Senna is the next one. I mean, like, with Senna, the beauty of Senna really is, is even if you have an absolute garbage team, as a support, you can genuinely solo carry the game. Like, you can deal 60, 70,000 damage as a support when you're playing Senna. Of course, you have to stack up for it, but Senna is the single only support that can actually, like, just just deal more damage than the ADC in a, in a lot of games, right? Like, it can actually be normal to deal more damage than the ADC when you're playing Senna. Because she's half an ADC herself. That's what makes her super powerful and actually give her a lot of solo carry potential as a support. The next one is going to be Thrash. Thrash is actually really strong as well. Like, 
when you get some items on him, when you get some of these stacks on him, you're gonna have a lot of ability power, a lot of armor, you can be such a nuisance to the enemies. And throughout the early game, you can get those hooks in, give free kills to your teams, and the later game, oh my god, he's, he actually does a lot of damage as well. And just the moves that you can do with this champion is insane. Like, you can catch out an enemy and not give him a single chance to just, you know, es escape or do anything. So that's what makes him a solo carry support. The next one is gonna be Leona. Basically, because of the same reason as Thresh. Leona has incredible CC, and if you catch an enemy out, you have so many chain CC abilities. You have your third ability to root the enemy. You know, you're going to catch them with the third ability. Then you have your first ability to stun the enemy. And then on top of that, you have your ultimate to stun them for even longer. Effectively, chain CCing the enemy for like four seconds or something. Four seconds! Imagine catching out an enemy for four seconds. Like, even if you have trash teammates, all they have to do is just click on the bu on their buttons and they will kill that enemy. Leona has that potential, guys. Really, really strong support. Next one I want to talk about is Pantheon support. Now, while Pantheon support may not be the very best support, while he may actually struggle in the lane matchup, you have solo carry potential. If you have aggressive roaming, also because of his ultimate, of course, you can gank lanes. Like, you can gank the mid lane, you can help your jungler, things like that. You can catch out enemies with that second ability stun. He deals a lot of damage. In the early game especially, you can really, really get ahead your team on Pantheon and really set your team up for a good late game when you play that support champion. Because you can, you can just gank constantly. He is one of the strongest gankings in the game, guys. So, that was it for the support tier list. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And... Uh, yeah, make sure you give it a like. I don't know what champion I promised. What was it? Jax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jax. A thousand likes. We're going to see Jax. So, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.